Welcome to episode 16 of the 24 Hour Hustle Show. And today I got special guest Christy Knights. She is the CEO of I Rise Leadership, psychotherapist, and also a divorce mediator. Welcome to the 24 Hour Hustle Show. I'm your host, Anthony Freeze, and today I got special guest Christy Knights. I'm excited to have you on because the things that I've seen and the work that you're doing is phenomenal. From the book, uh, Unsung Heroes, um, from uh, the things that you've done with your leadership and Global Sisterhood and podcasts coming out. I mean, I just love the work that you're doing, and I definitely want to find out more about you your story and all the things you're doing so welcome to the show thank you i am so happy to be here it's great to be in your space i've been watching you and you are doing amazing things i appreciate it i appreciate yeah. it we try to we try to bring amazing people together Absolutely. so that's what it's all about <laughs> so um um like we do on every show so before we actually get into it so what's been going on in the past couple of days i mean it's the new year you got a lot of big goals happening what things do you got in motion right now just really getting back into the swing of things. I took a week off vacation, which was nice, okay. over break, just to spend some time with the children. Mm -hmm. um, but now back to the grind, looking at launching a new business in mm -hmm. March. Um, so I've been working a lot around that, um, as well as the divorce mediation. Mm -hmm. Nice, awesome. So like we do on every episode, so let's get into your origin story, kind of mm -hmm. figure out who Christy Knights is and kind of get uh, 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 some context to with the, the kind of people that influenced you, what were your motivations, kind of what are the things that have developed your mindset to get you to the place where you are today? Hmm. That's such a loaded question. It right? is. Many layers to it. Oh, yeah. So I grew up in a very small town um, right outside of here, and my parents for centuries have been very generous people, mm. right? You, you see it in the family passed down through your ancestors, just this community around your family. And that started with me witnessing it as my grandparents would welcome people in, mm -hmm. to my mom and dad who raised over 350 foster children while I was in their home living with them. So that type of ministry has really lent itself to shape who I am and my desire to serve and give back other, to other people, mm -hmm. um, teaching value to those who may not know how valuable they really are to our world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So so what are some of the people that may have influenced you throughout your life whenever you were mm -hmm. growing up? Like, um, who sure. were some of the people that you looked up to? Certainly, my grandmother was one of them. You mm -hmm. know, her home was an open, open door for anybody. Um, my parents, of course, you really didn't know who would be there when you got home from school. Right. Whether it would be a new family that they were taking in to help support or a new foster child. They were definitely influential, as well as one of my college professors. Okay, so um, what was it about um, your college professor or your grandmother and things like that that helped influence you some more? Yeah, definitely just that consistent... Um, that consistent presence in my life with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, she was killed tragically in a car accident mm -hmm. when I was in sixth grade. And as a result, my parents really then dove into serving in the foster care community. Mm -hmm. um, so just that, that part of that lifestyle um, was really where I began to fall in love with caring for people at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Where talking for hours on end, staying up talking to kids, giving advice, mm -hmm. really became a part of who I am. And as I went into school, I was much more social mm -hmm. than I probably should have been. Okay. So I wasn't that academic. Um, I, I really wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a lot of after school activities. Okay, that's interesting. So did you like school at all? Because I know for most entrepreneurs, <laughs> it's like, this isn't for me. So what was it like for you? It was tough. Okay. I, you know, I struggled to fit in. I really didn't fit in all that well. Okay. Um, I felt more comfortable in the dance studio. I danced for six days a week. Um, so that was definitely, and giving back at different community service at the mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. So academics was not not for me. School was not for me. Okay. Um, although I did go on, you know, and went and, and had got my master's. Okay. But it was in my master's that I really came alive. Okay. Um, whenever I applied to school, there was a pretty good chance I wasn't going to get in with my grades. Okay. Yeah, I was a little bit concerned. But at yeah. that time, I had two beautiful children. I was married. So, you know, I knew I just needed more in my life and felt guilty about that. Uh -huh. um, so I did speak with a professor, and he was part of the administration program. And he said to me, look, at looking at your grades, you shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. But 
I know who you are in our community, and I believe in you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a chance. Nice. Yeah. 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 It was the golden hour for me, mm -hmm. and the really the the bridge to the rest of of my life. Nice. I know, and that's the common thread that I find within entrepreneurs. I because I know for me, once I got to high school, that's where I kind of struggled academically. Because at that point, it was like. Does this stuff even really matter? <laughs> like, am I going to use this information? You know what I mean? I, 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 and I still feel like this to this day. I feel like we don't learn the necessary uh, knowledge uh, to really exceed in life. I mean, we should be learning more about finance and yes. uh, getting ourselves more educated on financial literacy sure. and, you know, how to, you know, get our expenses in order or talk about yes. credit or, and things like that. So the important things in life, how do you get a house if you wanted yeah. to do that? Character how do you, development. Exactly. Right? How do you start a business? Mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So, yeah. um, and, and those things are out there, but um, eventually you, you got to go to college and you got to pay a ton of money for that. Right. Um, but those should just be necessary, general things we uh, should learn. So uh, I definitely felt that way in high school myself. So um, so tell us about um, when you got your master's. Where did you get your master's in? Um, I got my master's in professional counseling. Okay. Um, I knew since I was a child, sixth grade, literally, mm -hmm. that I wanted to be a therapist. Okay. That's would, early. Yeah. I would draw Rorschach ink blots mm -hmm. because I didn't have the machine to produce them. Uh -huh. And when I did that, I would ask classmates to analyze them and tell me what they saw first. Mm -hmm. And then in eighth grade, I actually did an analysis of each student because I went to a private school. Wow. So there was only 12 of us. Mm -hmm. And I did an analysis of every student with a diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> going hard early. Yeah. So it's part of who I am. It's part of my fabric. Uh huh. Right. So what? So that, that's interesting because I, what would you say is like the root of what inspired you to pursue that? Like, what yeah. would you say moved you in that direction? Definitely being raised with foster children. So that was the that's the key. Yeah, they're coming from all walks of life and so many struggles that I didn't see in my small town. Mm -hmm. They're coming from the big city, right? When I was a child, mm -hmm. so their struggles were everything from trauma and abuse to rape to drugs and alcohol to neglect and you know it. I had not even heard of those things as a child. Right. But when I laid in bed at night and talked with these kids who were my peers at the time mm -hmm. and gave advice and mm -hmm. they were thankful for that and I could feel that reward, that intrinsic reward, I knew it was my passion, it was my calling, and mm -hmm. my strength. Right, and a lot of those different things that you know those children go through or just people in general will go through can be tough situations and mm -hmm. they would need somebody to talk to. I mean, those are yeah. you know, tough things to talk about. Um, actually, there was right. the show that I just recently watched uh, called 13 Reasons Why, yes. and it's about suicide. Yep. And uh, have you ever seen it? I did. I watched the series. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so, I, And it's a really great story. It's a really good discussion to have because it's a real thing that happens. And, uh, and that's something that you also talk about mm -hmm. with uh, clients and things like that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, talk, t t you know, take us through, like, what would you say is just, like, what – what leads someone up to maybe just having these thoughts or what is mm -hmm. the way to prevent this from happening? Okay, good question. I think there's little out there. Very few people want to talk about it. Right. It's really difficult. But see, that's where I tend to excel because my goal is to teach you value. Right. So we get to the heart of the matter very quickly. Mm -hmm. Whenever we see people who are struggling with anxiety, depression, that typically is the cause of suicidal thoughts. Okay. Not all the time, but most of the time. So many people will say when someone dies as a result of suicide, they died due to the symptoms, mm -hmm. right, of anxiety, depression. Mm -hmm. uh, trauma is another reason, or abuse. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes our core values plays a big piece of that, right? If we don't believe in ourselves and know who we are mm -hmm. and believe we are worthy of greatness, oftentimes we're more prone to those thoughts. Mm -hmm. So. Short answer, anxiety, depression definitely leads to those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And when we try to treat them, medicate them, it's often a deep-seated part of the cognition. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's funny, whenever I got done watching that episode, my whole mm. perspective uh, changed on, you know, you could, because you never know what someone may be dealing with. Yeah. And uh, you just should always just try to be kind to everyone because you never know what they may be dealing with inside yes. that they may not be sharing. Uh, because actually, even yesterday, after I had watched the whole season and everything, um, one of the things that I said on my Facebook post, just saying something along the lines of, you know, if uh, someone hasn't told you in a while, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to let you know that you're loved and appreciated. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, at the end of the day, and you matter to me. So if somebody, whoever it may be, I don't know who it is. I'm just right. throwing it out there. Right. Uh, and if somebody happened to see that and that added value to them, and they ma- and that made them feel special, it makes me feel good that I was able to do that. So I, I know for myself, I want to be able to do that even more, just to make sure people feel mm-hmm. loved and appreciated. So yeah. um, because, like I say, you you just never know what someone may be going through, and and life is way too great for it to mm-hmm. just go like that. So, um, how long did it take you to post that? <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> yeah, so many people think it's a series of steps and they can't save the world and right. they make rationalizations and excuses for being vulnerable and real. Mm-hmm. But it took you two seconds. Someone may have read it mm-hmm. and you may have saved a life, changed exactly. your life. You'll never know. Right. There's someone in this book, one of our authors, who was on the brink of taking her own life and a teacher offered her a water bottle. Mm-hmm. That's all it took. She felt valued by a water bottle right. and that act, and it took a second. So you're right, we never know how we're gonna touch lives, mm-hmm. but we always wanna touch them in a positive way, mm-hmm. and it takes just moments. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's actually talk about the, uh, the book a little bit, sure. Unsung Heroes, which is actually deconstructing suicide through stories of triumph. Yes. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but it's something that I definitely wanna dive into. Um, so let's talk about that. What is, you know, so what's the, first of all, what yeah. what was uh, the thought process of, first of all, getting this book started? Good, good, yeah. So I was laying in bed one Saturday morning, really assessing where I want to go next. Mm-hmm. It was the end of the year or close to the end of the year. And again, we begin to evaluate what we're doing. And I wanted to make a difference. Um, at a bigger level. Mm-hmm. You know, people say to me all the time, well, you're a psychotherapist, of course you are. Mm-hmm. And I get that, but it needed to be deeper. Mm-hmm. And I knew that there was a gap within our society of areas that people can't talk about. And there's a few of us that are just wired to talk about the tough stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm laying in bed and I read a Facebook post by Lisa McFinn, and she's the first chapter in this book. Mm-hmm. And she shares about her journey of a concussion and as a result of the chronic pain, having dark thoughts, having suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. In that moment where she recognized that she needs to go on. Mm -hmm. And as I read that post, I started to cry. And the vulnerability was so real and raw in that moment. Mm -hmm. It was within seconds. I shot up a Facebook post myself and said, hey, look, if you are suffering from suicidal thoughts or you've had suicidal thoughts or an attempt and now you're on the other side doing well, Mm -hmm. I want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be in a book? Mm -hmm. I'd never published a book before. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I felt called in that moment. Mm -hmm. Within 48 hours, there were, I'm sorry, within 24 hours, there were Mm. 48 people who wanted to be a published author in this book, who were willing to go to that deep place. Amazing. The heroes, Mm -hmm. right? The heroes. So within that process, I began as a psychotherapist to think, gosh, there's some liability in here. Yeah. You know, I went with my heart, but we need to look at the head part too. Mm -hmm. Contacted an attorney who I had worked with side by side on another radio station. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, it's gonna cost about $10,000 to generate this contract Mm -hmm. that you would need because of people who are overseas. Right. I had people from Israel and Japan and Australia and England. Um, really wanting to be a part of the book. Mm -hmm. And she said, so if you take out all the people that are overseas, then you'll reduce your cost. Mm -hmm. I said, no, every life has value. If they had the courage to reach out and say, I'm willing to share this, Mm -hmm. there is no way I'm saying no. Right. What are my options? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, if you would like, you could form a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And I went, what? (laughs) (laughs) And I said, well, what's the purpose of that? Mm -hmm. She says, if you form a nonprofit, then our our firm would at least consider sponsoring you. They could provide the funds for this contract mm-hmm. and underwrite it. Mm-hmm. Um, so within 24 hours, I established a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. This was going to get done. Right. The voices were going to be heard. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. So established the nonprofit. And then I started a Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Um, I, have you used Kickstarter before? I haven't, but yeah. I, well, I probably have for like something little. Sure. Probably didn't do anything big, but I, yeah. you know, I'm aware of it. Yeah, yeah. So there's actually no logarithm to using Kickstarter, which I was completely clueless about. Mm-hmm. I really believed that this is a heart matter mm-hmm. that people would want to give endlessly to make change. Mm-hmm. Right? Not about me. It's about these people. Mm-hmm. Put together a video showing the authors. Did 
a lot of work behind it, mm -hmm. and we were at like 200 bucks and close to our deadline. Mm -hmm. With Kickstarter, if you do not finance the total amount, if the total amount isn't pledged, mm -hmm. you lose it all. Really? Yes, you get none of it. So at that mark, we creeped up to around 800 bucks, mm -hmm. and a publisher in England reached out to me, mm -hmm. and she was part of the Global Sisterhood, so we had some connection, mm -hmm. and she reached out and said, hey look, I want to make sure this comes to life. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to donate $10,000 worth of services to have this book published within six weeks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. What a gift, my yeah. angel. My right. angel, right? And, and you said, um, so how did you two initially meet? Was it through Facebook, you say? It actually was through the Global Sisterhood. Oh, okay, I see. Yes, yes, oh. through that networking um, entity mm -hmm. on Facebook. Nice. Yes, nice. absolutely. That is awesome. So within six weeks, she had coached me, and um, we got everybody together and, and published the book on December 6th mm -hmm. of last year, mm -hmm. um, and then launched the book. You know, and it's just been an amazing ride. All the proceeds for this book go right back to the nonprofit that I started, mm -hmm. I Rise Leadership Institute. Mm -hmm. And our mission is to eradicate suicide one life at a time. Nice. That is awesome. So, yeah. also, another thing that I want to talk about since you do um, Divorce Mediator, yeah. um, what about, you know, relationships? Well, entrepreneurs and being in relationships mm. as well, in committed relationships, whether it be, uh, you know, with their girlfriend or boyfriend or uh, husband or wife. Wh yeah. How does someone find that balance, ha trying to build a business or, um, you know, their side hustle and also having being in a committed relationship? I think that is so challenging. Mm -hmm. I think we have lived it all. Um, as entrepreneurs, you know, we are very excitable, ambitious, driven people, mm -hmm. and to find that um, equally yoked person can be a challenge mm -hmm. who isn't intimidated by who we are right. um, and who embraces us right where we're at. But, you know, what is balance? Um, one thing that you and I had spoke about before is, is, is there balance? Right. Right? Um, I think it's a matter of looking at your priorities mm -hmm. and uh, making it very simple, um, putting things in buckets, uh -huh. right? And my husband and I run into this because, you know, he'll wake up and say, so I saw you started a new business. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like out of nowhere. Oops, <laughs> did I forget to mention that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you working on a new project? I saw a post on it on Facebook. <laughs> exactly. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. Uh -huh. uh, but I've really learned through mentors mm -hmm. that it's important to involve him in that process. Mm -hmm. When he is involved in that process, then there's this cohesion and support that's unprecedented. Mm -hmm. He feels a part of rather than just a bystander. Mm -hmm. So I think that is one of the key principles mm -hmm. in relationships, is to involve the person at some level. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you work side by side, but you share the burdens of it, you share the excitement of it, the stresses of it, the mm -hmm. unpredict unpredictability and you allow them to weigh in and have thoughts too. Right, so do you feel like, um, you know, if it is a husband and wife situation or you know whatever yes. the relationship may be, do they both need to be entrepreneurs or can they both be slightly different? How does that work? Yes, I think two entrepreneurs together can probably be very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm yeah. single so I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because you're larger than life in uh -huh. many ways in your own head, uh -huh. right? I feel, I, in my opinion, I feel like if it was two entrepreneurs, I'm like, look, girl, we about to be unstoppable yes. right now. In my opinion, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but. as long as your roads converge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, absolutely it can work, and uh -huh. you can make it work. I, you know, I don't want to suggest that in any way, uh -huh. but I definitely see that as, as a challenge. I think that in order to really have a healthy relationship, you want people who complement one another rather than compete with one another, mm -hmm. and you would take two very mature people and healthy emotionally people to not compete at some level. Mm -hmm. And for one to say, okay, right now this is your opportunity, mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna stand down and it's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. And how can we edify one another in that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then uh, talking about balance a little bit, because this was a, I thought it was an interesting discussion when we sat down, yeah. um, talking about balance. What is your thought process on finding that balance, or how do you even perceive it today after our discussion? Yeah, after our discussion, it actually really influenced me because I often tell people, okay, it's all about balance. Mm -hmm. um, and what I decided to, to, to do is really kind of dispel that in my own mind and mm -hmm. say, it really isn't about balance, it's about preservation of self, mm -hmm. defining who we are in our own identity, and then aligning with our core values. Mm -hmm. When we do that, 
then we automatically go to what's important. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. And, and you know, it's not about a checkbox, but it's more about a natural alliance into um, into the depth of who we are. Mm -hmm. I, I know that probably sounds facetious, but it's not intended to be. Right. It's, it's, it's very real. Like, I know who I am, and I know my goal is to bring value to your life. Mm -hmm. So each day, how will I do that? Right. That naturally will then allow me to be more balanced mm -hmm. in my life. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absol and it was funny, after we talked, I, I was also trying to think of, like, more ways of, like, how this makes sense. Because I know sometimes I've, I've talked to entrepreneurs before, and they don't necessarily believe that there is a work-life balance. So yeah. I, I was just thinking, like, what, so how, what is it that people are looking for? And what I came up with, and, this, and it may sound weird initially, but... 100% zero percent rule, which pretty much just means spend 100% of your time doing the things that you want to do versus the zero percent that you don't want to do. So get get yourself to a place where with those things that you mentioned as far as the things that you're interested in, things that you want to do, maybe it's charity work, maybe you want to start a business, maybe you want to spend more time with family and things like that. How can you find a place to get yourself spending 100% of your time doing the things that you truly love. Absolutely. Because when it comes to work-life balance, it's like you may, even if you did have 50-50 of both, let's say you did um, work 50 and you did the things that you want to do 50. It's like, do you really want to be 50-50? Like, do you want to spend half, do you want to be a half person? Yeah, yeah you want to You want to be full, you know, right. you don't want to be doing something that you dislike. So, mm -hmm. you know, and so in my opinion, it's like, you don't want to have work-life balance. Do Spend 100% of your time doing the things that you love. Absolutely. Because um, we have a limited time here, so it's like, let's spend our t as much time as possible doing the things uh, we love, spending time with the people we care about, and doing things that brings us alive. Absolutely. Um, so that's something whenever I do get to the point of writing a book, that's something that I definitely want to get together even more mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, kind of just put that out there. You know, let's let's get to a place where we're spending 100% of the time doing things that we want versus zero doing things that we don't want to do. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. So also, um, talking about, you know, with suicide and tough topics, uh, you know, something that a lot of people don't realize entrepreneurs also deal with mental health as well and and yeah. suicide does happen within the entrepreneur community because um, a lot of stresses can come with trying to build a business and having a lot of you know deadlines and commitments and things that come with it so right. um, what would you say to someone that is an entrepreneur and they may be dealing with you know mental health issues or mm -hmm. maybe even having suicidal thoughts I think that first, you know, that first step is just awareness. Many people don't know that entrepreneurs, really there's a, a huge suicidal rate among entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple reasons for that, but one of it is this constant pressure, this constant need to strive and mm -hmm. please. Oftentimes entrepreneurs are looking for that next adrenaline rush. Um, and so being able to have that awareness is that the first piece of that. The second piece is once that awareness is there, if you notice there are symptoms mm -hmm. of anxiety, depression, burnout, feelings of overwhelm, to really look at who is your support network? Mm -hmm. Who are the people who surround you? And are they people that are good for you or are they toxic? Mm -hmm. um, and if you need that professional support, to reach out and do it. Mm -hmm. But also being aware of the self self-care component, mm -hmm. right? Taking care of ourselves is essential. And it is more than a glass of wine and a bubble bath <laughs> or, a, you know, right. a pickup basketball game mm -hmm. or a beer and a football game. It's more than that. It's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs especially need to make that a priority because it's a constant drain to build businesses. And our return can be much lower initially mm -hmm. as for building. Absolutely. Trying to find some time just to have some inner peace um, yes. Every now and then, I, I I know even for myself, Sunday is kind of like my day of just like relaxation, like try to keep things calm as possible, um, just so that you know I I can stay sane yes, <laughs> and not, and not go crazy with everything that's going on. Um, so definitely finding that time to just be in a space where I could just you know be at peace for a little yeah. bit and just kind of just step away from the work or the pressures of things and just take a just take a deep breath. Absolutely. You know, um, so I, I know for myself, I find that highly beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody deserves, you know, that day of rest, you know, yes. to just step away for a little bit, you know, take a deep breath. Um, you know, we understand that, you know, there's things that mm -hmm. need to be done, but we also understand that your well-being is most important, highest yes. priority at the end of the day. 
So uh, those things are definitely highly important. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> where, where, what are some uh, big things that you see yourself doing in the future um, that you're uh, working on that? And what inspired you to do the, the podcast? <laughs> We're letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> um, well, first and foremost, one of the projects I have been working on over the last year is a book. Um, it'll be published over the next couple of months, um, God willing. It's called Leadership Stripped Bear. Um, and I like the title of that. Thank you. Thank you. I worked hard on that title. <laughs> um, it, yeah, very catchy. So the, the principle behind Leadership Stripped Bear is the ability to be raw and real mm -hmm. in the space of others to increase productivity and profit. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we, you know, as corporate or as entrepreneurs, we put on this facade to be strong and mighty all the time. Mm -hmm. But what we're missing is that lack of authenticity is really off-putting. Mm -hmm. So this book teaches you how to get to the core of being authentically you, mm -hmm. how to own that piece of you, and to really give it back to the world mm -hmm. in a way of service, creating that legacy, and watching your profits soar mm -hmm. through service of others. Right. Um, so that's the first project. The mm -hmm. second project that um, you spoke about, the podcast, is, yes. Oh, real quick. So before we actually get into that, who are some of the people that inspire you as far as, like, leadership? Because I know for me, it's, yeah. I feel like a John C. Maxwell, maybe. A, okay, so you like yeah. a lot of his work? Yeah, I do like his work. Okay. Um, you know, and I am a, a, a Tony Robinson groupie. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, some may roll their eyes, but I absolutely love him. Oh, yeah, he's great. I think he's phenomenal. Yeah. And I think whenever you look at him as a businessman, mm -hmm. um, he's unprecedented mm -hmm. in what he does. He delivers value to people on a regular basis to the masses mm -hmm. and does very well. Yeah. Um, as far as going into homes and doing individual coaching, mm -hmm. that's something that I've done more recently is marital coaching with a couple in mm -hmm. their home. Okay. There's power behind that because they're in their own space and they're more willing to be real and raw, mm -hmm. we get more work done. Right. Um, so him, definitely. Um, Christopher Duncan is someone Ooh. who I have followed for a long time. Okay. Um, very real and authentic when you're in his space. Mm -hmm. Alec Chafin as well, big businessman. Okay. Does very well for himself. Russell Brunson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the type of, of people that I, I generally follow. Okay, dropped a couple in there that I don't know. Good value for me. Yes. I appreciate that. Good. Um, so, okay, yeah, so now let's get into the podcast. What inspired the podcast and what's the mission yeah. and uh, what's the goal that you're looking to get out of doing this? Just like last year at this time, you know, in December of last year, this past December, um, I, you know, I just thought to myself, what do I want to do to bring more value to people's lives? Mm -hmm. um, how can I give back at a greater level using my strengths? As an entrepreneur, <coughs> I have launched multiple businesses, and multiple businesses have failed. Mm -hmm. Everything from multi-level multi marketing, which wasn't my gig, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, different businesses to start memberships and whatever it may be, I've tried it. Mm -hmm. um, and they failed. So I tried to figure out, what is it? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was, I was chasing the almighty buck to pay down debt mm -hmm. instead of looking at who I am. Mm -hmm. So as I was evaluating, what are your strengths, Christy? Mm -hmm. What do you want to bring to this world? It always comes back to giving value to people. Mm -hmm. My dream was to be a professional speaker and speak to the masses like Tony Robbins, but mm -hmm. guess what? That's not natural for me. Okay. This is natural for me. Okay. Sitting in that space one-on-one -on -one with somebody, being able to not be afraid to look away, mm -hmm. right? And just teach value. Mm -hmm. So that is how the inception of Unsung Heroes Live podcast began to develop mm -hmm. and will then be part of uncallcounseling.com. Nice. Which is a website that will provide 24-hour, seven-day-a-week support for people who either aren't in therapy, between sessions of therapy, or who just need general advice like you and I. You may have a question about dating. Mm -hmm. How long do you search the internet when you're looking for an answer in general? Right. Hours. Yeah. We talk to friends, family. This is a site where it's one stop shop, mm -hmm. right? Where you're able to go talk to experts and professionals on a number of topics, whether it's live, video, podcast, or articles, mm -hmm. to arrive at a decision that's best for your life unconditionally non-judgmental nice very real and raw awesome awesome and then also again you know talking about how you were able to find you know your passion and and, and find what you will be ultimately successful at. what are some tips maybe you would say for somebody else that may be struggling to find that thing that is for them what are some um, you know things that you can say as far as advice for somebody else to be able to find 
their success intersections, so to speak? Entrepreneurs struggle to sit in the silence. Mm. We create projects when we're silent. Mm. It scares us when we're silent. Mm. So the ability to sit in the silence to evaluate who am I? Mm -hmm. Our identity is often lost in pleasing others, in uh, roles that we are in our life, whether it's you know a mom, a wife, a psychotherapist, we get lost in all of that. Mm -hmm. So when you have the ability to sit in the silence, take a pen to paper. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people want to pop open the computers and type it out. I respect it, mm -hmm. but there's something very cathartic about sitting down with pen and paper mm -hmm. um, and writing out your values. Mm -hmm. What is most important to you? When you look at what your strengths are, what's most important to you, what is a business then you can develop from your strengths, mm -hmm. not from finances, <coughs> right. not from something that isn't authentic to you, right? Right. But when you develop that list, then you can develop the business that really resonates with you mm -hmm. and it's successful, not because it's about you know the ne next niche market, but it's about your passion. Right. It's about purpose, it's about legacy mm -hmm. more than anything. Absolutely. And to add on that even more, there's actually two books that I read that I feel like has helped me find that point of success for me. Um, one of my favorite books and authors, Gary Vaynerchuk, yes. um, uh, and his second book that he ever wrote was called Crush It. Uh -huh. And uh, in that book, he just talks about finding what you're passionate about and finding what your strength is. Mm -hmm. And if you can find, you know, what you're passionate about and what your strength is, the money's gonna come. Um, you know, don't don't let that be the the be all and end all. Yeah. Um, but what are you passionate about and what are you talented at and as far as your strengths? And bring those two together and use the platforms as far as like you know, social media goes as Facebook or Twitter and Instagram and things like that and find your space, whether it's in audio maybe you want to do a podcast maybe you don't want to be on camera but you can be behind a microphone right. maybe you uh like to be in front of the camera but don't want to be just behind the microphone okay you can do a youtube show maybe you like may, maybe those things aren't comfortable for you but you like to write write a blog or uh or if your artistic sense are for visuals you can do pictures Absolutely. so you know find you know out of those four things the way uh, uh, a means to kind of distribute who you are as far as your talent and what you're passionate about. Maybe you're a, a chef and you you want to write a cooking blog. You, you can do that. Or if you want to do YouTube videos, you know, you, there's a lot of different avenues you can take it. So uh, Crush It is a book that I would highly recommend. And then also a book that I read was actually called The Success Intersection, mm. um, where yeah. it talks about finding that intersection of where you can be, where you can strive and be highly um talented at and also be highly successful in. So those are two things that I would add on to um, what you said as far as like things that people can use to help themselves be more successful and find you know Absolutely. what they're passionate about. So, um, well, And the other thing I would encourage that I'm really committed to is journaling. Nice. Whether that looks like just a standard journal or your, your planner. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm head over heels with the passion planner mm -hmm. um, and it really is about creating the art of organization mm -hmm. because whenever you, you create that art of organization you're committed to it and more accountable. Mm -hmm. If it's not on the schedule it doesn't exist. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so everything that I do is on my planner mm -hmm. and if it's not there then I end up sitting on the couch right right and doing yeah. nothing yeah so that's very important too mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs because we are often all over the place uh -huh. you need that focal point mm -hmm. that's something that I found myself having to do is just whenever I stay organized on something and I put it in my calendar or I write it down in a planner or something along those lines it keeps me organized because um, one of the first things I always do when I know I need to call someone follow up with someone uh, you know, book somebody for the show or do a show. Yeah. As soon as that happens, as soon as someone say, "Hey, call me," you know, on Tuesday at three p.m. As soon as I get off the phone, it's on the calendar. Like yes. because if I don't put it on the calendar, a, I'll forget. Right. And <laughs> but um, b, it keeps me on track. And then when the time comes to make that follow up call, I'm good and ready to go. Yes. Um. So it definitely keeps you accountable and yes. uh and uh, another thing that i always like to do something that i've been kind of experimenting with right now is <clears throat> uh, i also have a newsletter so i'll put out okay. what i want to do in the future so yes. when people see that and they're like they're like dude you say you're going to do this where is that right. so when people know what i'm trying to do and 
and I'm and I, I put a date on it. Yes. It's like it keeps me accountable. It's like okay, that date is getting closer. I need to start working on this. I need to push mm-hmm. something out. Um, so it, it always keeps that in the back of my mind to just stay in accountable to what yes. I'm trying to pursue. So uh, those are definitely some. I feel that's a good section right there. That is. And we got a lot out of that. Yes. Um, <laughs> So where do you see yourself going in the next uh, two to five years? Which, I mean, I know you said speaking wasn't for you right now, but you yeah. see that maybe in the future or more books, or where do you see yourself going in the next maybe a couple years? Sure, sure. Yeah, I love to write. Um, I, it's a passion of mine. Once Leadership Stripped Bear is published, I do anticipate speaking on it. Um, but I'm going to, uh, my hope is it'll come to me. I mean, I understand we have to chase things, we have to work for things, mm-hmm. and I, I get that. But... I, I think it's important too to allow to allow God's plan to be present, mm-hmm. and for me that was that's really important with this book mm-hmm. that God leads where I'll speak. I can't measure myself to all those other speakers out there. Mm-hmm. I just have to allow it to be that's true to me. Mm-hmm. Um, on call counseling, the goal is to have um, multiple people who have subscribed to this site receiving value and support, being able to give back to the community through OnCallCounseling.com. Um, and finally, to really grow, I'm also a divorce mediator, and to really grow that practice, um, giving back to people who are going through a very difficult time and have that ability to really sustain who they are without being shredded in the courts. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be three of the goals over the next two to three years that I see my focus mm-hmm. right now. Awesome. And the reason why I also asked that question is because um, as we were talking about accountability, this video is going to be almost like a time capsule. Yes. And with that being said, we're going to hold you accountable to those now. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, maybe in uh, two to five years or so or something like that, you know, I may on a random day just send you a link to the uh, uh, this episode Absolutely. And, say, and maybe just send you this section yes. of what you said. <laughs> It was like Perfect. so. How are we? So how are we doing on right, those things? So right. and it, and it's good for me too because I I say a lot of things. Yes. On here. <laughs> yes, I think it's so so it, it definitely That's keeps perfect. you accountable on uh, what you want to do. So and uh, and lastly, like uh, and close to getting wrapping up, what where do you see like the legacy? for yourself going because that's the big thing what are you trying to you know leave behind what do you want people to kind of remember you know Christy Knights of being and and doing so what do you see the legacy being for yourself a soul seeker okay someone who teaches value in each person that I see whether it's on the sidewalk or in my office space or a family member knowing that they were deeply loved and appreciated for who they are and that they are never alone so many people feel they have no one, but I put it on Facebook very much like you do, that each and every person that I come into contact with at any level is loved, supported, cared for. There is a safe place. Mm-hmm. So teaching people value is my focus, my mission, my legacy, especially with iRISE Leadership Institute mm-hmm. and the ability to really eradicate suicide mm-hmm. um, and what we're going to do with that nonprofit over this next year is is huge. People are going to want to watch. Mm-hmm. We're, we're developing groups in the community for children. Um, so, so really, not to go off on a tangent. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> a lot of people say that. Like, let's, 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 let's get this out there Spell right now. This. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you go on a tangent, it's fine. One, 100%. <laughs> go on a tangent. I, I, this is, that's good content for me. That's so, right. <laughs> so, you just have to work with. Yeah, so, so go for it. <laughs> Well, then I will I will cap it with this. You know, Unsung Heroes, you know, part of that iRISE Leadership Institute, what we are doing is we are launching a teen group um, in Butler County mm. in 2018 where teens will be able to come and talk about any suicidal thoughts that they may be having or the flip side, if they've been affected by suicide in any way. Mm-hmm. It will be a time of fun and fellowship with some experts, some therapists on, on staff there, as well as just a community building for our teens. Um, so I think that that's really important I wanted to share with everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to really answer your question thoroughly, um, vision is about value for me. Mm-hmm. Vision is about value. That's my legacy. When I die, I want people to say, my goodness, she touched a life. My goodness, I knew I was never alone in her space. Mm-hmm. That she was always approachable, authentic, real. Mm-hmm. Right? None of that fake stuff. Right. Exactly. I, and I, I love people that are transparent. I, I, I love it. Um, cause I feel like I'm pretty, well, one of, one of the things that I've learned, I'm, 
Uh, one of the books that I also read is called Personality Plus. Oh, yeah. And uh, have you ever read yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, it's a great book. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> great book. Definitely read that yes. book. If you want to find out who you are yes. and, uh, and, and having your self-awareness. One of the things that I found out in that book is that uh, I'm a uh, powerful choleric and sanguine. Ooh. More, but I'm more, like, powerful choleric, so I can be a little bit direct sometimes without, with mm. the, without the intent of, like, trying to be mean or anything. Sure. I just want to keep it real with you. I don't want to absolutely. sugarcoat it. Yeah. Um, uh, and also a little sanguine because I, I like to have fun. Let's face yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, that's definitely something that, uh, you know, I have found as far as, you know, just being transparent and real and raw, yeah. um, you know. And uh, I, I like that within other people, too, because I don't want someone to sugarcoat anything with me. Um, you know, if somebody if somebody feel like they have to be someone other than who they are yeah. around me, then that's not how I want someone to feel. Right, absolutely. Uh, you should definitely feel like who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, so just in wrapping up, where would be the uh, best place for people to reach out to you, mm-hmm. connect with you, or if they were, you know, feeling like they want to reach out for help, where sure. would the best, best place be for people to reach you? Um, definitely can go online at christinites.com. Um, do I need to spell that for you, or you're good? Yeah, yeah whatever you want, whatever you want to do. You know, if you put it in the bottom of your screen. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Right? Yeah, we, we got you covered. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, christynights.com. Someone can go directly on and schedule, whether it's a counseling session, whether it's to be interviewed on a podcast to talk about um, the mental health of our society as well as how you're a hero um, or divorce mediation. The other place is you can pick up a phone and you can call at Mm 412-837-1892. That's my office number. If people don't have a computer or aren't around a computer, you can call and leave a message. Mm -hmm. So those are the two best ways um, to get a hold of me. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah, we definitely got a lot out of this episode. I I feel really good about this. I've... to be honest, I can't wait to do a part two because um, um, you you got a lot going on. Are you inviting me back? Hell yeah! Nice. <laughs> so give it to me. Absolutely. So because uh, you got you got a lot of things going on, you got a lot happening, and I feel like another one would definitely be great to do. Just to you know, also keep you accountable as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, um, uh, so let me mention this. Yeah, one go for it. In terms of accountability, yeah, I've learned that you know I have a pattern of being a great opener and a lousy closer. Okay. Right. So many entrepreneurs tend to be that way. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out what it was, but here's the secret: whenever I discovered my strength and mm-hmm. my passion, I've learned that there's no doors closing Mm -hmm. because I'm running steam forward towards what my strength is. Mm -hmm. And so for this, I'm so happy Mm -hmm. with accountability Mm -hmm. because I truly believe oncallcounseling.com, Unsung Heroes Live is Mm -hmm. going to explode. Awesome. And and this is this is being finished, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This is a start to finish task Mm -hmm. that will be done. So I look forward to you being a part of one of those experts. Oh yeah. And for us perhaps co-hosting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Right? Good. Freeze and Christy Nights. I like it. <laughs> actually, in addition... Freeze and Nights. I like it. Freeze and Nights. Actually, uh, <laughs> actually, also in addition to the whole yeah. accountability thing, um, you just triggered something. Um, as far as like, one of the secrets I found that also been successful is follow up with people. Yes. That's something that a lot of entrepreneurs or people just in general don't do. Absolutely. Um, this, the success is in the follow up. Yes. So if you, you know, reach out to somebody and they happen to be busy and the time may not be right, make sure you follow up with them. Maybe yes. they did, maybe they just happen to be busy at that time or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they forgot, but you got to follow up with them. Um, one of the things that I found, I can't remember where I found this information at, but um, they say uh, with some people that are very busy and they may, and it's somebody that you potentially can collaborate with, you have to follow up with them at least six times wow. to be able to see the success at the end. Yes. Um, so, like I said, follow up is highly important. You know, Absolutely. if uh, if somebody you know happens to not you know. Um, respond to a message or something like that just follow up with the hey just want to see how you're doing mm-hmm. you know you don't necessarily have to talk about the project or whatever you may be working on just hey just hey just you know call in and say hey see how you're doing you know happy new year hey i saw it was your birthday i saw you know with yeah. the kids or something along those lines you know just you know find a way to reconnect uh and be able to get things done with people so uh, you know follow up yes. is definitely highly important yes yeah, so let's be transparent okay how many times did you reach out to me uh I feel like maybe... uh, Really? Oh, it was at least... 
five or six. Oh, wow. To be honest, I do this so often, I can't really remember. Yeah. So, you know, that's very authentic of you. Uh Because for me, it was about timing. It was about the busyness of life. Uh But I felt valued by you because you kept coming back. Uh Uh-huh. And I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. I <laughs> like this guy. And I'm also sitting back and watching, uh-huh. watching you grow and all the great things you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like you kept coming back and it allowed me to feel valued, which wanted, then I wanted to invest in you. I appreciate that. Right? You did some relationship building, which was nice. Yeah. you. I, I mean, <laughs> see, we're about to go on and on. Relationship building, like, that's another important thing that you got to yes. do. Like, you got to build that rapport with someone before you say, you know, before you announce what project you're trying to work on Absolutely. and things like that. Because one of the things that, you know, we always say on the show, and we've said it before, you know, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. That's right. So, you know, just build that relationship with people. And uh, and, and it is a, a skill that, you know, people should learn to develop. Another great book to re- recommend, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes, yes. Um, you know, if you want to get better in your people skills, read that book. Yes. Um, I've read that twice already. It's one of my favorite books it's in mm-hmm. my top five. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, if you want to learn how to definitely get relationship building going uh, beforehand and learn how to truly and genuinely care, uh, care about people, read that book. Absolutely. Um, but, um, yeah, like I said, we could go on and on. <laughs> we, could, yes. uh, we definitely have, to, like I said, we definitely got to do another episode uh, in the future. So uh, I definitely appreciate you coming you so on. I feel like time. we definitely got a lot out of this. I yeah. feel like we added a lot of value to people who Absolutely. are going to watch this episode. And uh, I can't wait to do it again. It's been my pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you so much. No problem. So. To you, the viewers that are watching, now that you know what Christy Knights does with her 24 hours, I want to know what you do with your 24 hours. Definitely like, subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a comment down below, and we will see you on next week's episode on Friday. 